Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to see how to frame a picture inside of a picture. We're going to see how to go from this to this. Let's go over to Elements and get started. This is a technique I saw Matt Klaskowski do, and I thought it was pretty cool. I'm using Photoshop Elements 10 for this video. I'm going to move my Layers panel a little closer. You can do that by just clicking and dragging on its top tab. And then I'm going to pull it down from the bottom here. Let's start out by duplicating the background layer. You can do that by pressing Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC so that we're working on a layer and our original version will remain untouched as the background layer. So I'll press Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC and you can see layer 1 up here. Go over to the Toolbox. By the way, I usually say Toolbox. You might see this referred to as the Toolbar or the Tool Panel, but they all mean the same thing. Anyway, click on the Rectangular Marquee Tool to make it active. And that's this tool right here, but it also shares the same space with the Elliptical Marquee Tool. So if you go to your Toolbox and you see the Elliptical Marquee Tool instead, just click and hold on it and then they'll both appear and then you can can choose the rectangular marquee tool. Move over to the live work area and draw a rectangular selection around the area that you want to frame by clicking and dragging diagonally. Don't worry if it's not perfect, we can adjust it later. I'm going to go around the three kids in the middle of the picture here. So I'll just click and drag around them and let go. Now we want to add a hue saturation adjustment layer. If you're not familiar with adjustment layers, don't worry, it's very easy. All you have to do is click on the Create a New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon in the Layers panel. It's this half gray, half white circle. A drop down list will appear. Go down to the Hue Saturation and click on it. When you do, a couple of things happen. First, you'll see a new adjustment layer at the top of the layers panel and the hue saturation adjustment panel will appear in the panels bin over here and let's drag the adjustment panel a little closer just like we did with the uh, layers panel before you can see there's three sliders in the uh, hue saturation adjustment panel go to the middle one which is the saturation slider and click and drag it all the way over to the left to completely desaturate the part of the photo that we had selected earlier. In other words, we're going to remove all of the color so that it's black and white. By the way, when we chose the Hue Saturation Adjustment Layer from the Layers panel, our selection went away and became the layer mask for our adjustment layer. You can see it in the Layers panel. It's the thumbnail on the right. If you aren't familiar with layers and layer masks, don't worry, you can still do this. Just follow along. Right now, I have the opposite of what I want. I want the rectangle to be in color and everything else to be black and white. To do that, I need to invert my layer mask. See how the thumbnail is mostly black and just the area we selected is white? Well, when I invert it, the thumbnail will be mostly white with the selected area turning black. You press Command-I on a Mac or Control-I on a PC. I'll do that now. See how the layer mask reversed itself? And because of that, if you look at our image, you'll see we now have our rectangle in color with the rest of the photo in black and white. Now I want to add a white frame around that area. To do that, I need my selection back. I can get it back by going up to the Select menu and choosing Reselect. That just makes your last selection active. And now I'm going to create a new layer for my frame. Click on the Add a New Layer icon in the Layers panel. It's a square with a dog-eared corner. Click on it and you'll see it creates a new layer at the top of the Layers panel called Layer 2. Now go to the Edit menu and choose Stroke Outline Selection. The Stroke dialog box appears and I'm going to choose a 7 pixel stroke. So in this width box just type 7 and I want a white frame and you can see right now it's going to be black. I can change that to white by clicking on it. Actually I can change it to any color I want in here but I want white. 
just click and drag up to the upper left corner inside of this color picker box. Click OK and you can see this has changed to white. Next for the location of our frame, it's the location relative to our selection. Do we want the frame on the inside of our selection, in the center of our selection, or the outside of our selection? Well, if you choose center or outside, your corners will be rounded. I want square corners, so I'm going to choose inside, and then click OK to add the frame and close the dialog box. Press Command-D on a Mac or Control-D on a PC to deselect. And that gets rid of our selection. And there's our effect, which is pretty cool. But now what's really cool is that you can move it around. You need to select both the frame layer and the hue saturation layer in the Layers panel. Click on 1. So here's our frame layer selected. And then hold the Shift key and click on the other one. So Shift, click. And now you can see they're both highlighted and active. Put your cursor inside the framed area and click and drag to move it around. Oops, first you have to get the Move tool. Go over to your toolbox and click on the top tool, which is the Move tool. Put your cursor inside of the, uh, the frame and click and drag. And look at that. It not only moves the frame around, but it also moves the color around because we have our hue saturation layer also selected. And you can put that wherever you want. You can also change the size of it if you want. Again, make sure you have both the layers selected in the Layers panel. Then press Command-T on a Mac or Control-T on a PC for free transform. You'll get this bounding box. Let me do that. Command-T. You'll get this bounding box around your frame with eight handles around it. Click and drag diagonally on any of the handles at the four corners to resize it. If I click and drag this handle, I can drag it out diagonally to make it bigger or drag it in to make it smaller. And if you move your cursor to the outside of the frame until you get that curved double-headed arrow, then you can click and drag and you can even rotate it and then still move it around wherever you want to. And you can also bring back a little color to the rest of the photo if you want. Oh, first I need to click on the green to accept my changes that I made to the position and rotation. Just click on the hue saturation layer and you'll get the three sliders again in the adjustment panel. Remember we brought the saturation slider all the way over to the left? Well, if we click and drag and bring it back a little bit towards the right, that color will start coming back and, you know, you can make it as subtle or as intense as you want. I'm just going to bring back a hint of the color and I kind of like how that looks. So this is a really versatile effect and I hope you have fun with it. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.